So before her death in 2007, June worked with the library to establish this annual lecture, and her request was a simple one. She wanted, it, she wanted the speaker to be someone on the front lines of social justice and active, activism. So this year, we're very pleased to welcome Ratna Omidvar as our speaker. She's the president of Maitri. We'll also be treated to a special musical performance by Canadian music legend Dan Hill. Now, I've been tasked with an opportunity this evening to introduce our, our speaker, and this has actually proven to be a challenge for me for two reasons. The first is I have a very short amount of time to introduce someone who the Globe and Mail earlier this year called a nation builder of the decade, and that's not the year, the decade. And the second part of my challenge is that this person is also my boss. Some of you may know that Maitri is a private foundation that promotes equity and prosperity through leadership building. And it's really been under Ratna's leadership that Maitri has become well known for its expertise in developing and implementing policies and programs that have to do with immigration, integration, and diversity. Now, to introduce Ratna, I'm not going to list off her numerous accolades, fellowships, appointments, awards, honorary diplomas, or affiliations. Instead, I'm going to share with you a couple of fine points about her leadership that will give you a sense of, of who she is. The first thing is, she is a big picture visionary. One of these visions was to bring people together around a table who don't usually speak to each other. The result was grand. It was a shift in the way Canada treats skilled immigrants. Some of you may be familiar with the Toronto Region Immigrant Employment Council, or TRIAC. To date, TRIAC has worked with over 5,000 skilled immigrants who have found jobs that suit their qualifications. In fact, the model is so successful that it's been emulated in cities across this country and, in fact, out beyond our borders. And they're trying to, to work to the same level of success that TRIAC has enjoyed. When one good idea finishes, or takes flight, Ratna is quickly on to the next. She co-created and currently co-chairs the Diversity Project. This is the, the Greater Toronto Leadership Project. This program contains a series of really practical initiatives that works to, with the goal of bringing the diversity that we see on the streets of this, of this city into the boardrooms, the media, and also City Hall. Something else about Ratna is that she knows that it's worth taking the risk to voice your ideas. Anyone who works with her knows that she's full of ideas. And I'm looking over here at my colleagues. Her ideas come when we're around a boardroom table, when we're getting out of a taxi in the elevator, and they're good ideas. That, along with her dedication and determination, make her someone that people want to hear from. People want to know what she thinks. People like colleagues and individuals who seek her advice on personal matters, like myself, or individuals and in leaders in the corporate world, to politicians, policymakers, you name it. She's presented her ideas at a number of conferences, including conferences like organized by the UN, and she's off there again next week. She's also been appointed to a number of task forces. This includes Prime Minister Paul Martin's External Advisory Committee on Cities and Communities, and most recently, the Task Force on Modernizing Employment Insurance, which he co-chairs with former Saskatchewan Premier Roy Romano. Anyone who's ever worked with Ratna knows that her energy, passion, and quest for excellence is absolutely contagious. In a word, she's inspirational. My father called me about a month ago to say that he'd seen her on television. He couldn't remember exactly what she was talking about, but he said, you know, she's done a lot for immigrants in this country. My father's an immigrant himself who came in the 60s, and the only other person I've heard him say this about is our former Prime Minister, Pierre Elliott Trudeau. But Ratna is so much more than her work in the immigrant and refugee settlement sector. She is, she, for those of you who heard her on Metro Morning this morning, she has been a teacher of German. She has been a film extra. She is an avid bridge player, and if you want to get on her good side, ask her about her garden. I canvassed colleagues to ask them how best to introduce Ratna tonight, and it was amazing the number of them that said, 
Have you ever heard her, have you ever seen her dance? She's a phenomenal dancer, and I'm told there's a dance floor in Halifax that won't be forgetting her anytime soon. <laughs> Tonight, we have a very unique opportunity to hear some of the personal experiences that have shaped her ideas and leadership. Please welcome Ratna Omidvar. Thank you, Tina. That was a lovely introduction from a lovely colleague at Maitre. Oh, and thank you. That wouldn't have been good. Um, and I'm not going to dance, that, that, although I think that may, have, that may have been more fun, but still. Um, thank you so much, Tina and the Toronto Public Library, for inviting me to speak to you today. Um, to be frank, I'm somewhat in awe of being in the same company as James Lockyer, Sally Armstrong, and Mary Jo Letty, and of course, even more odd to be delivering the June Caldwood Lecture today. June had an impeccable sense of timing. She was impeccable in so many ways, but um, she, she knew places where she had to be and conversations that she had to be part of, and I'm absolutely sure she's in this room somewhere today, and she's looking over us right now, because that's the way June was. And she was a wonderful speaker, and she was a, a wonderful human being, and I certainly hope some of that uh, touches off on all of us today. As, as you may guess from the title of my session, it's called A Canadian in the Making. My remarks are going to be of a somewhat personal nature. This is somewhat new for me. I normally get to stand up here and talk about policies and programs, etc. cetera. Um, but I'm not going to do that today. Uh, but those of you who know me, and I hope others too, will notice the link between the personal and the professional. I'm going to tell you my story in Canada. I am going to assume that many of you in this room will find a share of the story in your life as well, because we all have a starring role in the same three-part reality television show. It is called Exile. It goes on to Endurance. You come to Awakening, and then you find, finally come to Redemption. So instead of a speech, I have chosen to write four letters to Canada, and I'm happy to share these with you. The first letter is written on June 2nd, 1981. Pearson Airport. Dear Canada, I got my first glimpse of you from the airplane. Everything I imagined is unfolding in reality. I see a vast land, forests, green spaces dotted with many lakes. And even as I look up at you from up here in the skies, I can almost touch and feel the freedom and the optimism. I clutch a piece of yellow paper in my hand. It's a very special piece of yellow paper because it was very hard to come by and therefore it is so much more valued. When we left Tehran a year ago in the early dawn and fled across the border into Turkey with our one-year-old daughter Ramona, who's here today, we had no idea where we would find refuge. Those of us who are Iranians or have Iranian friends, know that every Iranian has a horrifying story of escape to tell. In retrospect, ours was rather mundane. A long bus ride, a nervous exchange of papers at the border, then into Turkey in the middle of the night, and then finally over to Munich. But there is one moment that stands out in my memory. It is pretty indelible. We're in a square room at the Turco-Iranian Turco border in northern Iran. It is bitter cold in the room which is set up as a border crossing 